uh, budget presentation. I'll turn this over back to you, Dr. Evans. Thank you, Ms. Oristano James. Uh, tonight we'll be hearing from our school principals and our athletic director, Mr. Budenhagen. Uh, they will be presenting uh, their budget proposals for the upcoming year. Uh, in this past uh, budget development, uh, Ms. Fela provided uh, all of our administrators with what a, a kind of three-year average expenditures looked like. And that's a little different than um, maybe some methods that were used in years past. So what the public will see tonight on the slides is what last year's adopted budget number is compared to this year. However, that doesn't give a complete story about the uh, the, the consideration and deliberations that were made among administration and staff about, so how much should we appropriately budget for for next year? So I wanna give uh, a lot of uh, credit to Ms. Fela uh, and the administrators, not only who are joining us here tonight, but uh, at, last, at the last board meeting and the ones to be coming up at the March 18th meeting as well. So I've said enough already, I'm gonna pass this over to Ms. Fela. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Janet, can you bring up the presentation and share your screen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so like um, Dr. Evans said, tonight the um, buildings are going to be presenting their budgets along with athletics. You'll notice on this that we have art, music, and PE separate. Um, we had discussions with the bills this year about um, allowing them to create budgets district-wide. So we have a K-12 um, art bill. We have two PE bills that uh, um, Mr. Budenhagen will oversee, so he'll present the PE budget as well. Um, so it's a little different, a little more information. Next slide. Um, so at these meetings, we um, you know seek input from um, the public. Uh, please send in any questions to comments at k12mcsd.net, and we will respond. Our goal is to be as transparent as possible. And uh, if you have comments, please do them in context of the budgets being presented. Next slide. So we're gonna start off with high school budget. I know it's a little difficult to, um, to see, but um, our high school principal, Mr. Wilder, will talk about his budget. Mr. Wilder. Thank you, Ms. Fela. So overall, the budget um, that we're requesting is a, an increase of about $10,000, maybe I think just maybe just a little less than $10,000 over last year's. And where the bulk of that comes from is in the general supplies line right at the top here on this page that you see. Um, that's as a result of the uh, increased cost of graduation and the additional cost of anticipated student activities due to fewer fundraising opportunities. Uh, over the past year and a half and likely into next year, um, a lot of our classes have um, not been able to fundraise as they have in the past. And we don't want that to limit the opportunities available to them. Um, and even with that, we want to be able to increase the number of opportunities available um, in anticipation of returning to school and having the opportunity to be together. Uh, we want to make sure that we're creating an experience that uh, is gonna be memorable and positive for the students. And uh, the cost of graduation has increased um, dramatically over the past few years as a result of the increased um, effort to ensure that our graduates um, feel celebrated as a result of uh, their achievements. Um, within the context of what we've been working through uh, with the restrictions of COVID. Uh, so throughout, you, you'll see that um, whether it's conference codes, field trips, uh, or general supply codes, a lot of those have been reduced overall in anticipation that um, there, there'll be some opportunities, but they'll be shifted. And uh, so that's the budget for the high school. Okay, we uh, go to the high school has quite a few pages. Okay, so here's the um the art budget. You can stop on the art budget. You don't have to go past that. So uh, working with our art deal, 
she requested that um, she have more involvement in um, developing the budget for the district. So this is her request. It's actually down a little bit from the previous year, but um, she feels comfortable with those figures. Next slide. Music, um, music's been doing their own budget for several years now. Um, again, it's a slight decrease um, where they shifted some costs between different codes, um, basically supplies, but um, anticipating increased ticket prices for their field trips. Uh, next slide. And now we're off to the RJK Middle School, Mrs. Knowlton. Hi everyone. Um, you'll notice with the middle school budget, there's a reduction in a little over 14,000. Uh, there are two areas that we really focused on, our supply line and our conferences. Um, and really what we discussed this year is what are our needs versus what are our wants? And is there some areas that we need to uh, reduce? So for instance, um, in the science budget uh, from last year, you'll notice a reduction. Uh, but $1,000 of the science request this year was to calibrate um, their microscope. So you'll notice that in our budget, we've added maintenance contract science. So even though you'll see a reduction in science, that money has been shifted to another budget line. Um, when it comes to the conferences, many of the conferences for the 21-22 uh, school year, um, many of them will remain virtual. Uh, so there wasn't a need uh, for as much money in our conference line. Uh, the next page, um, again, the, the supply lines, uh, you'll notice that um, there is a reduction, for example, in the English supply line. Um, we are able to uh, purchase some of their supplies through our textbook line, uh, because this year uh, with the pandemic, many of our student books are on or purchase through overdrive. Uh, so we'll be able to use that budget line. Um, you'll notice there's an increase in the supplies for PBIS. We went from 1,000 to 2,000. Uh, we are transitioning to the ruler program. So we wanna make sure that we have enough money uh, to purchase any supplies that we might need for that transition. And then finally, um, the AV supply line, we went from $1,000 to 2,000. Uh, many of the departments had requested uh, headsets uh, for the iPads. So instead of each depart uh, department uh, putting in their supply line a uh, couple hundred dollars for headsets, I put $2,000 in overall for the building. And that's the middle school budget. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, Rutherford, uh, Mr. Palmer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to say thank you uh, to Ms. Faella with her guidance in looking at our budget from this year as well as the year before. And then what we are asking for, which is exactly the same as this year for next year. Um, after looking at all of the issues with uh, the transition and the, uh, the expenditures connected to those, we have decided that asking for the exact same budget at this time makes perfect sense as we continue our transition into next year. So all of those numbers are exactly the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And next up is the book school, Mrs. Gallant. Good evening, everyone. Um, similar to KLR, our budget is remaining pretty much the same. Um, we did receive a postage meter this year. And so in the past, um, we always purchased stamps and we will no longer be doing that. And so we uh, now have the rental of the postage meter and um, we'll be utilizing that for all of our mailings. Um, we have had an increase in mailings just because of um, the situation and making sure that we're communicating everything to our parents um, that are hybrid and remote. Um, and so we did account for that for next year. And then we're hopeful too, that we can um, utilize those lines. Uh, our teachers have been attending um, conferences virtually. We um, hope to 
make sure that our students and our, you know, students have opportunities uh, with field trips and, um, and all of the other uh, important lines that have been budgeted for in the past, we, we would like to continue with. So there's a slight increase, um, but we feel it was necessary. Thank you. Thank you. And the Chase School, Mr. Frandino. Good evening. Uh, so I do have a bunch of notes in the uh, change justification column, but in general, uh, we shifted funds to postage uh, also because of a possible increase in needing to mail things. And uh, we've taken some funds from mileage because it is very likely we'll have, uh, we'll have less need to be traveling through the district or even to conferences at this point. Uh, same thing with instructional conferences. We've left a little there, but it can be reduced. And the central administration has been supporting us with very many of the, the conferences that we've been doing. Uh, field trips and assembly we're keeping. Uh, we're hoping to still provide opportunity, even if they're virtual or, or whatever needs to be done. We're not changing that at all. Uh, textbook, that's again, one-to-one -one funding. So we're keeping that number. And uh, I think somewhere in there in the general supplies, it's, uh, it's shifted a bit because uh, uh, staffing and student population is basically just a, a number we calculate based on our estimated population. And so when we do that, we end up with about $4,000 uh, difference from last year. And we just uh, were comfortable going with that number. Thank you. Interscholastic Athletics, Mr. Budenhagen. Uh, yes, um, if you, you know, take a look at our sheet, uh, we do have a decrease of 26% or roughly $63,000. Uh, a big chunk of that was out of uh, our budget uh, column number two, contractual expenses. Uh, in that uh, item there is where we have our lease to own agreement for the uh, high school weight room. Uh, we are going into the third year lease now with that weight room and that is now under a different budget code. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. Um, this year was kind of unique when it came to athletics uh, and what was spent and what wasn't spent. Uh, we were able to save in non-instructional equipment. Uh, in 19 and 20, uh, we did develop a needs assessment plan. Uh, with uh, the COVID-19 and things not going on, we were able to purchase um, many of those items from that needs assessment. Um, so we are moving forward there. And also uh, we did uh, roughly lose about seven to $8,000 in our supplies in interscholastic athletics. Uh, we were working on a five-year, three-year uh, uniform replacement um, scenario. So now we will be on top of uh, uniforms coming in every three years for varsity that would then would be handed down to the JV. So those uniforms would be repurchased every three years, six years, and then uh, modified for five. Um, so roughly, if I take a look at it, our budget is 7.65% uh, down a decrease from when the budget was in 1819. And that's pretty much where we're at. Okay, thank you. And then um, PE, you, do you wanna explain PE a little bit? Uh, what, what, what we were doing there is um, over the last three years, what we've noticed between uh, middle school, high school, the three elementary schools, um, the, the PE staff um, would, it wasn't really streamlined. We'd have three different elementary schools possibly buying three of the same things. <laughs> have a middle school and high school possibly, you know, doing the same. Uh, this way, uh, by streamlining it with the high school, middle school, and with the three elementary schools, we'll be able to hopefully, you know, save some money by consolidating um, purchasing items that can be shared throughout the district. Um, and this will be the first year. I know it's been done in the past uh, this way at Monticello. And uh, we just think that's going to be something easier for, for the, the PE department to handle this way and hopefully take a little bit of the load off of uh, the principals in each building. Thank you. Okay, and then finally, our budget calendar, the general information gives us some dates for board petitions in April. Um, 
Board adopts the budget in April 20th. It's available to the public on the 29th. Our public hearing will be May 6th. We mail our budget notice on May 12th, May 12th, which is also voter registration day. And the budget vote is May 18th, as long as um, it doesn't get changed by the governor, like it did last year. <laughs> our upcoming meetings, March 18th, we'll discuss curriculum and staff development, PPS and special program, and also our BOCES budget. April 6th, we'll have our staffing benefits and district-wide discussion, and hopefully by April 20th, by, well, at April 6th, we will be able to give you an update on our bringing it all together and present the budget for adoption on April 20th. I'd like to thank all of the building administrators and uh, athletic director for being here tonight to present their budgets, and um, that's all we have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fela. Um, at this time, I'll entertain questions from the Board of Education with regard to anything on the budget. Anybody have anything? Again, remember, we've got time to ask questions, Ms. Jersey. Um, I have two questions. One for the high school. I noticed that there is an SAT review line, um, which hasn't been, it's actually the same as last year. We don't feel a need that we should offer any type of SAT review, SAT review course since what's going on with COVID in the lack of being prepared, because we can't be. <laughs> so um, over the years, we've tried a number of different approaches for the SAT preparation. We've offered classes during the school day for SAT prep. Uh, we've uh, offered after school uh, activities and uh, preparation programs. We have an online program through our um, uh, guidance program that we use. And so, um, we're still working through uh, what's possible in terms of that. After school SAT prep programs are much more expensive. And uh, so the line that we have right now helps us to uh, provide materials for students and also the, uh, the online program. Um, and we'll, we'll continue as a, as a building to explore how we can provide additional opportunities. Okay. One, one more. Yes, Ms. Jersey. Um, it's for the athletics. Did we um, budget anything for any type of cardiac screening for the athletes? That is something that come up that was uh, kind of new with uh, the COVID uh, through Section Nine. Something did go out on our school website where Monroe Woodbury uh, took the lead, and they provided it down at their complex. Uh, it was shared with uh, our district. Um, I am unaware of who took advantage of it or who didn't, uh, but it's something that I've been talking to the athletic director at Monroe Woodbury about how they came up with it and how they set it up. Uh, and, you know, if it's something that we feel that we need to go forward with, that there is money in the budget still with some of the things that we saved on through, you know, just the course of the COVID, but that is something that we can definitely look into. Okay, thank you. Any other questions around the table? Um, I do have a question and it quasi goes to athletics and quasi goes to music. Um, there's a lot of uh, currently in the CDC guidance that requires, um, so I I'll use, I'm sorry, Mr. Budenhagen, I, I apologize, but I have to go to the music end, but you'll understand where I'm coming from. So our kids share a tuba in school and it used to be that you just changed out the mouthpiece, but now you have to own a tuba for the child because they're not allowed to share an instrument according to CDC guidance. Um, same thing is true with a number of the athletic uh, things that are needed within the physical education classes. Do we have enough money in those budgets that if things, to, I mean, because ultimately our goal is, is to get as many kids into our classrooms as possible as we're making this transition, but those requirements may still be there. I don't wanna see kids not be able to participate in things because we have not anticipated that expenditure. Uh, right now, we're in compliance with uh, the CDC guidelines that we have. Uh, like you said earlier, it changes day to day and uh, week to week. Uh, right now, I feel comfortable with uh, everything that we do have set in place. Uh, our budget is quite flexible this year with just the nature of things that have happened in athletics, where if we needed to, to move something from one code to another, I feel comfortable that we could do so and, uh, you know, take whatever steps forward that we need. Okay, and do we have information from the music end if their budget is, I mean, I don't know who's reporting on that. 
because that's instruments and that's money. So you want to get um, back to me on it? Back. Lisa. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if they built that in, but uh, with the CARES funding, if it's directly related to COVID, you know, that might be a possibility that we can use that funding as opposed to our general fund and, and get those additional instruments that way because yeah. it's being mandated through, you know, because of COVID. So we'll look into that as well. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, the way I look at it with the music stuff is any instrument that can't ride on a school bus. <laughs> right. So, um, and that's a number of our students, you know, basses, cellos, tubas, trombones, you know, anything bass like clarinet. that. Bass clarinet. Bass <laughs> clarinet, um, anything like that. So, okay, I just want to make sure that we have enough money across the board with regard to that, just in case. Um, so uh, any other questions from board members? Thank you, Mr. Budenhagen for answering that question for me. I believe Mr. Crumley has a question. Mr. Crumley? Um, for the high school uh, supplies, teaching, regular school, um, did, did math last year buy something exorbitant? They're down 11K. So in the math, we've been purchasing a lot of uh, calculators for students. Um, moving forward, we anticipate with the possibility of one-to-one um, -one devices, which we're still working out the details of. Um, there's an application that uh, we can use for throughout the school year, which will save a tremendous amount of money. And then we can make sure that we have the calculators available for the testing. So that we only need 40 for testing rather than having 140 for everybody in every class. Right. And uh, accounting for any kind of breakage that might happen. And the only other thing I kind of, I mean, I understand additional cost of anticipated student activities due to fewer fundraising opportunities. Um, everybody's going to be on a crunch. And unfortunately, that also means the students. Um, I don't know. That line kind of worries me a little bit because that increased uh, close to 35K, um, whatever. I mean, that's kind of Lisa's thing and your thing. And I understand it's not 100% fair to the kids, but at the same time, everybody's going to have to kind of tighten their waistline a little bit and sharpen their pencils and figure out and maybe we'll figure out who the really good fundraisers are because um, I don't know, some of those lines just seem, uh, I'd rather have supplies for everybody rather than making sure a bunch of kids get to go on a field trip someplace. Um, unfortunately for the next two or three years, that's kind of what it's going to be. Um, I have no problem spending extra for nicer gowns and a place for graduation and things of that nature. Uh, kids that are graduating deserve that. Um, not the kids don't deserve a field trip, but at the same time, um, we have to look at the whole and not just a group of kids that want to go on the enterprise for an afternoon and get out of classes. I understand that's not exactly what it is, but sometimes when you're a kid, that is exactly what it is. Um, so that's my two cents. Thank you. And uh, just for context, the uh, graduation costs have increased uh, by $15,000 uh, as a result of the additional um, time uh, for all the professionals uh, as a result of the extended time to hold graduations. And so that's just one event that we were able to hold last year. Uh, and there's a number of events that we're uh, hopeful that we're going to be able to hold for students um, that again, if we're having multiple events to allow for smaller groups of students to participate, but all students have access to participate that are generally staples of a high school experience, that's what we're trying to account for. But I agree with you that we're going to have to make sure that we're, you know, making tough decisions regarding where the priorities lie. Anybody else around the table? I've got a lot of Brady Bunch screens here, so I just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay, so on behalf of the, the uh, Board of Education and our community, uh, we thank each and every single one of you. Uh, sometimes it may seem like we're a little tough on you or we're a little rough on you, um, and it's not meant to be that way at all. As a matter of fact, we probably are your biggest supporters with regard to knowing what you have been doing through this pandemic, what you as the, as the as I like to say, the middle management administrative team versus the you know central office administrative team 
um, the amount of work that you have been doing on a daily basis that takes you beyond what it ever was that any of us who have that license to be an administrator ever trained for. They never taught us about how to get through a pandemic. They just didn't. Um, and we wanna thank you for all of the work that you've been doing along with central administration to ensure our students' safety, to make sure that we are, that we are being as fiscally responsible as we can be to our community and to ensuring most importantly, more than anything else that everyone in your buildings are safe. So we do appreciate what, what it is that you've offered us.